as we've been going through this book, um, it's uh, made us aware of, of uh, uh, different aspects of prayer. And so I've been asking different people to come and share um, when and how they learn to pray. And so in a moment here, I'm going to invite a couple up here to share their experience with God, really. That's what it is. And um, uh, when uh, we interviewed this couple, the elders got together and talked to this couple. Um, it is so amazing what God does because um, the woman was raised in Tenasket. Where in the world is Tenasket? Does anybody know where Tenasket is? Raise your hand if you know. Okay. So huge metropolitan, <laughs> and um, she ends up marrying a guy from East LA, wow. and it's like, how does that happen? Um, so as it turns out, she was following Christ, and she was on a mission, and she ends up down at this little church, um, and before that, um, he was saved out of a lot of mess down there in East LA. I don't know how you can live in East LA and not be messed up, but anyways, um, he found the Lord, and they ended up at that same mission church, and they looked into each other's eyes, and it's history. And so I would, that's a short rendition of their testimony. But Johnny and Lori, would you, would you come up? And I've got three questions for both of you to answer for, for us today. So come on up here. And uh, So you don't have to read this note. I, I did this already. So this... Okay, um, they have to use the mic there, Lori. I've got one on. Let me turn this off. There we go. There's a little buzz there. I don't know what's happening there. So, um, so here, here are the three questions. Um, how did you learn how to pray? So, Lori, why don't you go first and step up? Because this, yeah, there you go. Is that too high for you? There you go. Okay. Uh, well, I was very blessed to be raised in a Christian home. So. I was, you know, brought to church when I was less than a week old and <laughs> went from there. And my parents, uh, they did a, a breakfast devotion and a, and a prayer, like a spoken prayer. And then we always sang our lunchtime and dinnertime prayers. And then we had our bread time, bedtime prayers, you know. So I, gr I grew up in um, a very traditional church and uh, learned to pray there. Um, and then... Um, I got some uh, extra training once I went to, uh, well, of course, it's just, you know, you listening to those around you. Um, and then I got to, a chance to go to Youth with a Mission, a discipleship training school in Southern California right before I met Johnny. <laughs> and um, and they, they did um, some great trainings on prayer, so I learned a lot there as well. And I'm, just, I'm still learning, so yes. <laughs> yes. it's exciting because there's so much to learn. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Johnny, how did you learn how to pray? Sorry about all these chords. That's but okay. You got it. Okay. Um, she's the one from Tenasket. <laughs> so my, I remember my mom sat down with me. We, I was raised um, um, Catholic, and, um, but my mom took the time to sit down with me and explain who God was and, 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 and the prayers. And I remember being so hungry for God but not knowing how, how to be saved or how to be redeemed yet. And I remember I would literally lie to go to catechism. It was a Catholic. Uh, uh, Bible classes. They took the kids in elementary school, and my folks never signed me up for that. But I would, I would tell the nuns, "No, my name is on there. I'm going." <laughs> and um, and and so you learned. Uh, what is it? Your first catechism. There's yeah. these there, there's these steps you do, yeah. and um, so I learned the, I learned quite a bit of the prayers there, but it was mainly my mom sitting down with me and yeah. really one-on-one -on -one taking the time and, um, yeah. And I'm so grateful. Amen. Amen. Okay. Two more questions, Lori, I guess we're back to you. Oh, watch out for that guitar behind you there. Uh, so Lori, when did you get serious about prayer? When did it become, you knew that you were desperate and you got real serious about prayer? When was that? Well, I don't, I mean, I, I remember always knowing when I'm speaking to God that it was serious in a sense because I'm really connecting with the God of the universe. Um, but 
I, I remember specifically, you know, when a, a friend in the church got very serious, you know, uh, seriously ill, going out and praying, you know, mm -hmm. seriously for him. And um, I just feel like there's been times like that throughout my life. Um, you know, diff there's always crises that come up yeah. <laughs> through life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I'm, I like I'm saying, I really am on the journey. I I know intercessory prayer um, is something I haven't delved into as deeply as I know I can, and I'm looking forward to learning more about that. Okay, thank you. So Johnny, same thing. When when did you get serious about? It? Now you you learned as a child, and all of a sudden it's not a child's prayer anymore. Now you're desperate to connect with God. When did that happen? Um, I would say it's when I really needed God in my life. There's a particular moment in time in my life where I really needed the power of God. I really needed His hand. Um, living down in East LA, I, I was working at a place and. Um, they hired a, a man, um, a pastor, and he was maybe five years older than me or something like that. And, you know, I, I, I was like, what went through my mind was, you know, pastors don't work. So I was thinking about Catholic, you know, the fathers don't. And so, but I was always fascinated about God, and I always asked him questions. So he spent the time with me um, telling me about God and, um, and about, especially about, you know, the, the Son of God, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And there was an incident one night when I was going to lose my life. And um, talk about getting serious. <laughs> um, one of the most horrifying nights in my, in my life. And I, I was serious. OK. And he came through. <laughs> he came, he's alive. Um, so when, when we're with each other, and especially um, now that we're going to have a little more time to share with each other around a meal, um, you know, those kinds of questions um, might help you to um, hear about somebody else's life. Talk about prayer. Ask about when that was serious. And so what's going to happen when you, when you ask these kinds of questions, and not just about the Seahawks and the baseball and football and all that, but ask these kinds of questions. You, you have the... Uh, I'm giving you a privilege to do that here, <laughs> okay? So when we have the meal, just ask about each other's prayer and what that looks like. So the last one is, so um, then why pray? Let's just, let's just end with that. Why pray? There are a lot of answers for this one. <laughs> um, one that's gonna, you're going to see um, soon my song is all about is because of the joy that you receive when you meet with the Father. <laughs> so joy in his presence uh, and because it pleases the father and then there's um, you know the needs you know you just he's the source of, of life he's the source of strength health peace you know joy mm -hmm. it, hope everything we need he's the source of so that's why you meet with him <laughs> 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 protection <laughs> so many so many good reasons amen thank you <laughs> thank you so johnny uh why after all this why pray um yeah like Lori said this one goes <laughs> all over the place um like like many of you in this in this room, you, you know when you pour your heart out and and God answers, you start realizing something that He is He is He. I'm very sorry. It's um, we are the apple of his eye, and um, he takes such great delight in us. So when we pray, yeah, he answers prayer, mm. and it just rocks you. <laughs> it just rocks you. And I know there's many here that can come up here and talk about answered prayer. Yeah. So why do we pray? Because God commands us, or teaches us to pray yeah. and um and it's 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 that connection with with the great i am with god almighty 
That's so. it. That's it. Um, Lori and Johnny are making their way over to, I'll let you guys do that, over to the piano. Um, and I asked, I asked them to do this song. So Lori wrote this song, and I want to read some of the words to you. And this is a prayer song from her heart, from her heart to the Lord. And the, the title of the song is called In the Morning. And, and here's, uh, here's what it says. In the morning... I come to your throne, for I am, the one, I am one of your own. In the morning I come to see you are there waiting for me. And the chorus repeats itself and it says, you are filling me, filling me, filling me with your joy. And that comes out of that scripture reference that says, um, in your presence is fullness of joy. Um, and so let them get set up there and look this way for a minute. Tony's going to come and help adjust some things here. He's going to take this mic, and I'm going to use this one. There we go. Um, and so what you're going to find with this song is there's some things that are repeated in it, um, but remembering it came from Lori's heart as she was praying to the Lord. And so it, there are these truths that keep coming into, your, into her mind that she kept repeating about who God is. In the morning, I search my heart to see if there be any sin. When I confess it, you are faithful, just, and just to forgive and cleanse. And then she says, you're filling me, you're filling me, you're filling me with your joy. In the morning, I lay at your feet all of my burdens and cares. I will patiently trust in you for you care for me. You are filling me. You are filling me. You're filling me with your joy. In the morning, I, I speak to my heart, revealing the truth of your word, or you speak to my heart, teaching, equipping, empowering me to go and to do what I've heard. You're filling me. In the morning, I worship you, and you are so beautiful. Father, I give all that I am. Please take me beautiful to you. Make me beautiful to you. Um, and so... I, I think most of you realize that there's times when you just need to get with God without distraction, and these truths need to pour in. And so uh, may this become a prayer for you also. Thank you, Lori and John. This is called In the Morning. I wrote it when I... Uh, in the first couple years of our marriage, we lived in Southern California, and it was <clears throat> a little bit difficult for me because I was uh, a country girl, and I was living in the city, <laughs> a big city, um, but I found that the Lord would meet me wherever I came to meet him. <laughs>
If, uh, if you have a sense that something's missing in your life, then know that he wants to meet with you. And he can meet with you anytime, anywhere. He can meet with you on the playground like you do, and you're hanging upside down on the bars. He can meet with you there. This heart connection, I don't know if you heard the, dr- the drum. I was thinking of my heart going, that heart connection. So here we are going... What do we do when stuff happens? Well, we pray. Because that's our direct line to the one that loves us more than anyone. And he puts everything back into the right place. And into that place we need to be connected with him. So um, I'm going to talk about three areas that we pray. One is uh, when we're rejoicing. Um, That's a good time to pray. And to be thanking and praising God when we're rejoicing. And then as... um, as Lori was talking about interceding for others, that's an excellent time uh, that we're praying. That's, that's what we need prayer for. And then for deliverance, uh, for ourselves and for others. So there's another area we're going to just talk about. 
And then um, this last place is, is when we want to really please God. That's, that's a time to be praying. So um, open up your scriptures to Luke chapter 1. And what you're going to see is this is when Mary, who is now pregnant with the Lord, she goes to Elizabeth and they get to meet and she gets to find out that her cousin Elizabeth, who was barren, is now with child also. And so both of these women are rejoicing. Um, and, and so Mary is rejoicing. And this is a famous scripture of, of what Mary says in she believes, what she does is she believes in what the angel told her and she responds and she responds then with, uh, with, uh, um, with her cousin here responding in, in uh, this good news. And here's, here's what I want you to think about is that she's responding in this way because she has become part of the solution for her people. She gets to play a huge role in the solution to the problem that her people have. And so the joy uh, of, of uh, realizing the good news and then her part that she gets to play. And so I asked Diane, Diane, you moved, there you are. If you come up and read that portion of scripture for us, and this is Mary's uh, response to the Lord. Oh, the mic needs to come back. Sorry, Tony, I jumped on. We'll let him put it in so he, we don't drop it or whatever. Uh, Tony's doing his part in the kingdom, amen? amen? Yeah, yeah. Each one of us have a part to play, and when we realize uh, there's many things we can do in his kingdom, but we can rejoice, right? We can rejoice in our part in the kingdom. And so thank you, Diane, for doing your part in the kingdom and reading about what Mary has to say. Luke 1, 46 to 55. And Mary said, my soul exalts the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior, for he has had regard for the humble state of his bondservant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercies, and his mercy is to generation after generation towards those who fear him. He has done mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and exalted those who were humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has given help to his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, just as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Amen. Bless the reading of God's word. So Mary's response, full of joy because she found out she's got a part to play in, in God's plan. So uh, Jesus says in John 16 to the disciples, I chose you. And if you've believed on Lord Jesus as your savior, then he chose you. And he chose you not just with a ticket to paradise, but a, a role to play in his saving plan. See, the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. So that spirit, that is in you to do that, to be helping others uh, to find him and to walk with him. And so that, that role, um, faithful is he who called you and he will do it. So I'm praying, Lord, show me my role today. And many of you here have, have done different roles. Maybe at one time you were teaching Sunday school and now you're teaching your grandkids. And, you know, so we've got different roles for different seasons of our life. And the amazing thing is he wants us to embrace it where we are now. Embrace our role now. Okay, embrace our role today, Sunday. Embrace our role right now in what we're doing here today. There's something that came to mind for me. In Romans, it says, um, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. 
And I've realized something about myself, and maybe you too, is that I've grown up working real hard at being stoic and just, okay, I'm not going to respond. I have no emotion, you know, and so that's been, it's been a killer for joy to happen. And it's like, I don't know how to be joyful. You know, some people, they just go crazy and they don't care what anybody (laughs) thinks and they're jumping around and I'm going, whoa, that's ridiculous. Why would I ever do that? But have you ever experienced that kind of joy where you just let it go? I haven't yet. I, I, I don't know. Now, I do it in the presence of the Lord when nobody else is watching, but I've never done it in a group, and I don't plan to do it up here this morning. (laughs) Unless the Lord does something amazing. But you know, those touchdown dances and things uh, before the Lord is right and good, but um, maybe you know how to rejoice and just rejoice to the fullest. I want to do that. And you know, the same when people are hurting, and they'll share some of the tragedies and will this guy tear up? No. I, I've been, I, there's, there was a valve somewhere where I shut off and no tears come. And I'm going, I'm sorry. I, I want to feel it, but I don't. And I understand, you know. But I want to turn that on and just when, when enter into that. And so as Paul says in that template of being a believer is rejoice with those who rejoice. Just do it. Rejoice of what's good and what's happening and enjoy that moment. Just let it last. Now, there's some people in here that celebrate birthdays for a whole month. Bless you for that. It's like, this is my birthday month, so let's have a party. I think that's cool. You know, the the Hebrew people celebrate for a week long, so maybe even a week long we could do that, right? Um, So praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You do it for a month? Okay. Um, we didn't sing happy birthday to the March babies. You know, but we've got to do that sometime. We didn't do it for February it's, either, I don't we think. Still, we still have, this is the last of Okay, she's thinking of birthdays. Usually we sing happy birthday to, to, to March babies or February babies, so. You said you were going to do it once a month. I said I was going to do it once a month, and I keep my word when I remember. So I hope you will join me in when it's time to rejoice. Let's, let's rejoice with one another. And when it's time to cry um, over losing of a son, or let's, let's cry. Let's let it happen that, you know, that we're part of the family. So here's Mary rejoicing. So it's a good time to uh, join God in his plan to love people by rejoicing with them, crying with them. So interceding, another Another good time to pray is interceding. And so, uh, Dale, would you come? And uh, I've asked Dale to read Genesis chapter, um, chapter, what chapter is it? 18. Chapter 18. So open up your Bibles to Genesis 18. And this is a time when Abraham pleads, he intercedes for Lot, who got messed up. He saw the city lights, and he went to Sodom and Gomorrah. He got all messed up, and here's, Um, here's Abraham pleading before the Lord um, to spare Lot. Thank you, Dale. Beginning at verse 22, Genesis 18. Then the men turned away from there and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood still before the Lord. And Abraham came near and said, Would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there were 50 righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for 50 righteous that were in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? So the Lord said, If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Then Abraham answered and said, Indeed now, I, who am but dust and ashes, have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose there were five less than 50 righteous. 
Would you destroy all the city for lack of five? So the Lord said, if I find there 45, I will not destroy it. And he spoke to him yet again and said, suppose there should be 40 found there. So he said, I will not do it for the sake of 40. Then he said, let not the Lord be angry and I will speak. Suppose 30 should be found there. So he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. And he said, indeed, now I have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 should be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 20. Then he said, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak but once more. Suppose 10 should be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 10. So the Lord went his way as soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. Thank you, Dale. So did you hear how many times he pleaded with the Lord for Lot's life? Isn't that a beautiful thing? And many of you are doing that. You're pleading for those that haven't trusted the Lord, those going through tough times. You're pleading, Lord, spare them. And you know, there's an, uh, an amazing thing about praying for someone else. When we know our own sin, we can pray that way too. Lord, um, forgive their sin like you've forgiven my sin, right? Th those core things, Lord, would they find that sweet spot with you like you, like you did with me? Lord, may they know your presence. Those kind of things, those kind of core prayers is where it really counts. And so interceding like Abraham over and over again, Lord, I'm but dust. Lord, uh, could you just, and Jesus even teaches that persistent prayer. He, he wants us to be asking, seeking, knocking. He wants that kind of faith on display for ourselves and for the sake of others, for our country. So, so there's, um, there's what happens. We can pray for family, friends. So when stuff happens, we pray. We connect with the God of gods, the King of kings. So then there's this prayer of deliverance. And I asked Howard to come and pray. So open or to read. Come and open up your Bibles to Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. And we hear Daniel praying for deliverance for Israel. Now you remember, Daniel was hauled away. Uh, Jerusalem was overrun by Babylon, and he was uh, taken away, but he was elevated to a place of, in uh, Babylon, and here's Daniel, and he, uh, and he calls out for God's favor. <clears throat> Daniel 9, 1 through 19. In the first year of Darius, the son of Asuerus, of Median descent, who was made king over the kingdom of the Chaldeans. And the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, observed in the books the number of the years which was revealed as the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet for the completion of the desolations of Jerusalem, namely 70 years. So I gave my attention to the Lord God to seek him by prayer and supplications, with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed and said, Alas, O Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant and loving kindness for those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned, committed iniquity, acted wickedly, and rebelled, even turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. Moreover, we have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and all the people of the land. Righteousness belongs to you, O Lord, but to us, open shame, as it is this day to the men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and all Israel, those who are nearby and those who are far away in all the countries to which you have driven them because of their unfaithful deeds, 
which they have committed against you. Open shame belongs to us, O Lord, to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong compassion and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him. Nor have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his teachings, which he has set before us through his servants, the prophets. Indeed, all Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside, not obeying your voice. So the curse has been poured out on us, along with the oath which is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, for we have sinned against him. Thus, he has confirmed his words, which he had spoken against us and against our rulers who ruled us to bring on us great calamity. For under the whole heaven, there has not been done anything like what has been done to Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this calamity has come on us. Yet we have not sought the favor of the Lord, our God, by turning from our iniquity and giving attention to our your truth. Therefore, the Lord has kept the calamity in store and brought it on us. For the Lord our God is righteous with respect to all his deeds, which he has done, but we have not obeyed his voice. And now the Lord our God, who have, who have brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and have made the, a name for yourself, as it is this day, we have sinned, we have been wicked, O Lord, in accordance with all your righteous acts. Let not your anger and your wrath turn away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain, for because our sins and the iniquities of our fathers Jerusalem and your people have become a reproach to all those around us. So now, our God, listen to the prayer of your servant and to his supplications. And for your sake, O Lord, let your face shine on your desolate sanctuary. O my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolations, and the city which is called by your name. For we are not presenting our supplications before you on account of any merits of our own, but on the account of your great compassion. Lord, O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and take action for your own sake. O oh my God, do not delay because your city and your people are called by your name. Thank you, brother. So did you hear confessing the sins of the nation? Confessing sin? Did you hear him state God's promise to return as, as people came and, and uh, repented? Did you hear him plead for mercy? He said, there's, there's nothing else. We, we plead mercy. And the very center of God is that mercy that he keeps for you and for me, that covenant that will never be broken in Jesus' blood. He keeps on forgiving. He will never not forgive you. It's his covenant. He's kept it. So then we respond by calling out to him. We call out to him when stuff happens with rejoicing. We call out to him when we intercede for others. We call out for deliverance. And that's what he's calling out for here, deliverance. Open up your scriptures to Ephesians chapter 1. And listen to this prayer for the Ephesian people. Ephesians chapter 1. And what I'd like to do is just um, listen uh, for the words of of. This kind of prayer, this kind of core praying for the very center of who people are, that this is where God wants to meet and give power and strength and his Holy Spirit. So in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, beginning at verse 15. 
Therefore, I also, after I heard your, of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints, uh, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and the revelation of the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of, in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age which is to come. He put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So um, just pulling this, um, this morning's message together, when stuff happens, what do we do? We, we call out to the one who loves us. We call out to the one that he's pouring his spirit through Christ's sacrifice through us and to those around us, this love of helping people find the love of God for all eternal life. And we get a glimpse of paradise. We get a glimpse of heaven when we're tracking with him. When his spirit is pouring through us, we get to rejoice and we get to love people beyond what, we've, what we can do ourselves. It, that's what he wants. That's the truth, is that... We weren't supposed to live this life in the flesh any longer. We're supposed to live it filled by his spirit. And so doing what the Lord has done in demonstrating his love for us, his love from the cross, the Bible says that he demonstrated his love for us, that we would know his love. There's no doubting his love by Jesus suffering and dying on the cross so that we could be free. And then the power that he gives, that resurrection power to live this new life. So here's what's happening. We're asking uh, each one of you to um, connect with God that has saved you, the God that has given you new life, and to be moved by the power of God in every circumstance that you're in, even going to the grocery store, even cleaning the house, that to be connected with him in that way. So that, so what's happening is God prepares us for the next thing that's in, in our plate, that, that's coming, the next thing. He's preparing you and me. And some of it's gonna be tough and some of it's gonna be um, full of joy beyond measure. Um, I said this before, but there, there are things that are coming. There are things that are coming to us. And we need to be ready, empowered by the Holy Spirit 